Hey guys, I'm so glad that we are all back today and that you could join in with me for this video. Um, so today we are actually going to be reading some Dear Abby articles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read what the writer wrote into Abby um, and then I'll give you a second to pause the video. Um, when I pause the video, you're more than welcome to talk it out with somebody around you and make it kind of like an activity um, or maybe you can just think about it yourself. You're also welcome and encouraged to comment maybe some of your advice on this video. Um, maybe we can get some conversations going back and forth um, out of just pure fun. So before we begin with Dear Abby, I do want to give you just a little bit of background on Dear Abby. Um, so Dear Abby was actually started by a woman named Pauline. So Pauline had a sister whom was a twin um, that actually landed a job um, at a competing newspaper um, and she became an advice columnist. So Pauline became um, an advice columnist and named her advice column Dear Abby. Um, so the two of them wrote advice for the competing newspapers and it was kind of like a rivalry rivalry between the two twins. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump right in and start reading you the first article or the first um, letter. So Dear Abby, as a way to manage my stress and anxiety, when COVID hit, I began to exercise. Neither my husband Chris nor I had ever been into fitness at all. As the months have gone on, I've realized the power of being healthy. I try to exercise every day. And the problem, Chris gets angry. He calls it me time and has made it difficult for me to go. I tried swimming in the morning before work, but he said he couldn't manage to get our two-year-old ready for school. I tried to go to the gym in the early evening, but he said he needs me to get the children ready for bed. I tried running later at night, but it didn't feel safe and I had trouble falling asleep. Abby, I don't know what to do. Last night, he told me I am selfish and should move out. Can you help me? Signed, Keeping My Sanity. So go ahead and take a second to pause my video and talk this one out. I hope you guys had enough time to pause the video and talk this one out. Um, so what I'm gonna do next is read what Abby has actually written. So Abby says, Dear Keeping My Sanity, Establishing a routine of regular exercise was not selfish. It was the right thing to do, and people have been experiencing symptoms of depression and stress ever since the pandemic began. It's more important now than ever that you continue to take care of your physical and emotional health, and it's a shame that your husband hasn't done the same. Rather than preventing you from doing what you have been doing, your husband should have praised you. He could be jealous about what you have accomplished. Um that he would say something as extreme as you should move out was childlike. A mature approach would be for the two of you to agree upon a schedule in which he either dresses the kids in the morning or tucks them in at night. It would be a lot less expensive than a divorce and your husband might even grow to enjoy it. Um, so that's definitely kind of tricky whether you agree with Abby or not. Um, that is the advice that she has given. But no matter during the pandemic or just any other old day, it's very important to take care of not only your physical well-being, but your mental well-being as well. Um, so if you're able to find something that is kind of your niche or maybe a hobby that can pass the time by, um, would be really good for everyone. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read another um, Dear Abby. So this writer says, my boyfriend and I have been living together for almost five years. His parents bought a house a few doors down. They pop in whenever they feel like it, and they even walk into our bedroom while we're in bed. And I need this to stop. His mother and I had a falling out in the past because she felt she has the right to control everything, down to where I keep my dirty laundry. This is a touchy subject with my boyfriend, let alone his mother. Please help me. Signed, needs privacy in Maryland. So go ahead and take a second to pause this video and talk it out. I hope you guys had enough time to 
pause the video and talk it out and um, offer some of your own advice. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read what Abby says back to the writer. Dear needs privacy. No one should enter your home without first asking permission. And that goes for your boyfriend's parents. That they would enter your bedroom while you and their son are in bed is over the top. I fail to understand why this could be a touchy subject with your boyfriend. When he became an adult and moved out of his parents' home, surely it had something to do with privacy. It's time you change your locks on your doors and hash this out with a professional if necessary. If you can't do that, just start counting your blessing. Chief among them should be thanking the Lord this woman is not your mother-in-law. So whether or not you agree with Abby, um, I do think that privacy is very important and um, especially as an adult, it's part of becoming a doll, just having your own privacy. And I do think it's common courtesy, no matter who you are, um, to maybe knock before you come in and just make sure it's a good time for a visit. Okay, I have one more for you guys. Um, so this one says, Dear Abby, at what age does a person stop calling an older neighbor Miss or Mr.? Um, so I think a lot of people can relate. Growing up, I think it was proper manners um, to address people older than you call, you know, Mr. and Miss. So I was born next door and still live here. So I don't know what to call my neighbors anymore. Signed, Grown Up North. Um, so I'll go ahead and give you guys a second just to pause the video and talk it out. Okay, guys, I hope you had enough time to pause the video and um, talk about what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and read you what Abby says. Dear Grown Up North, Before children reach adulthood, it is considered respectful to call adults Mr. and Miss. Not knowing your neighbors, I, can guess, I can't guess how formal they could be. Because using their first names has not been your practice and you don't want to risk offending them. You should ask them what they would like to be called, in light of the fact that you are all adults. Erring on the side of respect can never be wrong. Um, so I think this one can be relatable. Um, there's a certain level of just respect that you want to offer someone who is older than you um, without risking of making somebody feel older than you, right? Um, so, you know, just be cautious and think about what you say before you say it, I guess. So thank you guys so much for joining me in. Remember, you are more than welcome um, to comment on this post and we can all have a friendly conversation together. Um, and until next time, I hope you enjoyed the video.